hands. As you can imagine, I am among the tallest prime ministers in the world. And so the temptation to talk about the world is very big. But my country is among the smallest in the world. So the need to speak about it is also very big. And I'll try to resist the temptation and to fulfill the need without being boring. And I hope with your patience to have a certain success. I very much believe globalization is here to stay as long as we live in the same planet, as long as we are warmed by the same sun, as long as the depend, deepening of our interconnections has become unstoppable. Our genuine interests in across the board and beyond the borders cooperation is growing bigger despite reluctances and rejections. And multilateralism is and should remain the instrument for cooperation. The problems we are dealing with today are every day more interrelated. Take climate change. And by the way, we all know that global warming is not just a climate issue. It is a development issue, a security issue, an issue that affects the strength or the weakening of world peace as a whole and of peace in various regions, an issue with long-term impact. Therefore, the more effectively we deal with it, the better to prevent natural disasters, fires, floods, droughts, rising water levels, loss of land, etc. Is not today the COVID-19 pandemic a global issue, which has taken so many lives compared to the loss of a world war? Are we able, as isolated nations, to fight against this bleak of modern times? We saw it, and the answer is, of course, we are not. The same logic, in my view, grow, goes for security issues, for the fight against international terrorism, for the cyber war, for a supply with drinking water and food for all, for the attainment of a sustainable and long-term development with the aim of leaving no one behind and so on and so on. In these times of global challenges, which are also times of trust challenges, a global approach is required. The commitment of all of us within the structures we have set up is required. But for sure, adopting these structures to meet today's challenges is a must. And not in a hegemonic, but in a harmonic way, I might say. Albania believes that the renewal of a profound commitment to effective multilateralism is more necessary than ever so as to deliver on peace, democracy, human rights, and development. Within this frame, we strongly support the vision and the ambitious reform agenda of the UN system and that of the Security Council as well. With a firm commitment to the principles of multilateralism, Albania successfully chaired last year the OSCE, making an enduring and long-lasting contribution to peace, human rights, and equality. Under our leadership, the OSCE Ministerial Council agreed several new commitments on combating transnational organized crime, countering corruption and preventing torture in the OSCE region. We delivered much needed progress in all three dimensions of the OSCE security. As a believer of multilateralism on a global level, Albania will be for the first time in its UN membership history a member of the Security Council of the United Nations for the term 2022-2023. Fully aware of the responsibilities trusted upon us by the United Nations family, we will bring to the Security Council the perspective of a small country with a constructive foreign policy and a consistent commitment to multilateralism. With a group of like-minded, we have undertaken the initiative to launch a treaty 
against the pandemics in order to face successfully in time such kind of costly pandemic situations. We are concerned also about negative consequences of infodemic in the context of the COVID-19, which can heighten the risk of conflict, violence, human rights violations, and mass atrocities. We need greater integration on the sustainable development agenda with peace and security as well as human rights. Albania considers that the achievement of the Sustainable Development Goals and the implementation of the 2030 Agenda is a shared responsibility. We are in full track with European Union policies and international documents and decisions to develop energy sector in full harmony and friendly with the environment. The Albanian government has started to reform the sector of electric energy since 2014 through actions undertaken to complete the legal and regulatory framework in compliance with the European Union third package of energy and in full compliance with the EU directives on energy. We are focused on the diversification of the power production based always on renewables like water, sun and wind. This will reduce the high dependency on the weather conditions and as currently almost all the production is based on hydro sources. The government is developing the national energy and climate plan according to the new policy guidelines and energy community agenda on decarbonization in the energy sector. This plan will forecast the total power production based on the domestic installed capacities for the period 2021-2030. So Albania is expected to be a net exporter of electric energy within this decade. But talking about the challenges of our times in this city, I cannot avoid to speak about the role model of the UAE regarding peace, multilateral cooperation and human solidarity. The signature of the Abraham Accords between UAE and Israel was a shockingly positive development of discontinuity with ages of stalemate in one of the longest and deepest conflicts of our world, undertaking the huge step of reaching out to the historical enemy, UAE led by example, towards a completely new direction of addressing the future, not by forgetting the past, but by forwarding the future. And by doing so, making the future the base of dealing with the past and not let the past dictate anymore the future. This major development in the history of peacemaking, it is a true source of inspiration for the world, as well as for us in the Balkan region, where for so long time, bloody wars and conflicts have prevented people of different nations to see themselves as humans and deal with each other humanly. On the other hand, we, Albania, have experienced firsthand the UAE human solidarity after the devastating earthquake of November 2019, when 15,000 families lost their homes in less than a minute. His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed was among the very first to weigh in among a vast number of foreign leaders who expressed their solidarity not just in words but also in deeds. And thanks to him and to the government of UAE, whole brand new neighborhood is being built today for families that lost everything in that tragedy. I'm very proud to conclude here by telling you that Albania has stood strong in protection of the Afghan people at risk. Following the course of events back in Afghanistan and the spirit of solidarity, I talked about a little while ago, we Albanian government took right away the decision to host in Albania up to 4,000 Afghan citizens. It's a very big number compared to much bigger and richer countries which contribution did not reach the bar of the challenge. And during all these days, many people have asked me why. And my answer is very simple. First of all, by doing so, we've honored our history. 
and our tradition. One of uh, the pages, the most beautiful page of our history being the salvation of Jews during World War II, when Albania was the only country in Europe with more Jews after the war than before the war, because no one Jew was given up to the Nazis. Secondly, we may not be rich, but our memory cannot be short. We were the Afghans 30 years ago, when leaving our own hell, escaping our own Talibans. They were not fundamentalists of Islam, but they were fundamentalists of Stalinism. We had to cross the sea and to appear on the shores of Italy and Europe like aliens of which nobody knew how we looked like. And if we were not sheltered and given help and hope 30 years ago, we would not have been here today, a country with EU candidate status aspiring to become one of the Union's members. And thirdly, maybe most importantly, we did it because we owe it to our children. They should not be raised in an environment where they are told to shut the door, to live in fear, to turn the back to them in, in need, but they should learn by deeds, not by words, that in this life there is a time to ask and there is a time to give. Thank you very much.